Hey again everyone, so I'm back with another review and today that's going to be on Texas Gothic by Rosemary Clement Moore and I'll start by reading the back of the book. Amy Goodnight's family are far from normal. She comes from a long line of witches and grew up surrounded by benevolent spirits and kitchen spells. All fairly harmless but Amy can't wait to get to college and escape the family business. But things take a darker turn when she and her sister Finn spend the summer looking after their aunt Hyacinth's ranch. Amy is visited by a midnight spectre who is clearly trying to send her a message. It seems that the discovery of an old grave on a neighbour's land has been the catalyst for an apparent ghost uprising. Aided by local friends and Ben, the handsome cowboy who just can't take his eyes off Amy, the sisters investigate, and they soon find that there's something strange and dangerous going on deep in the heart of Texas. Okay, so, first like I said, I haven't read Rosemary Clinton Moore's first book, The Splendor Falls, and that's because when I um, looked at it and searched for it and stuff, um, I didn't really hear a good review about it, or I heard the plot was good but that it was slow, um, and bits were repetitive, so I didn't really try it. Um, but I saw this spring up in people's book halls in the YA community, and I thought that I would give this a go because it sounded different. Um, and I really liked it. I think I'll give this a 4 out of 5? Yeah, I'm going for 4 out of 5. And basically, Amy knows that her family are genuine kitchen witches. They're not, you know, um, evil, horrible witches. They're just, they just use little spells and grow herbs um, and are psychics and mediums and that sort of thing. And a bad experience in her childhood means that she stays away from anything supernatural now. She doesn't want anything to do with it and she goes to look after her aunt's ranch with her sister and this ghost appears and she hasn't seen anything like that for a very long time and freaks her out and she basically ends up tying herself to this ghost and vowing to find him and solve whatever it is the ghost wants to her to solve. Um, there are people getting her and and there are questions, is it this ghost? Is it a mad monk? Um, because in the neighbouring ranch's land um, they're building a bridge and they unearth a skeleton and so archaeologists from universities come and dig it up and so Amy, her real name's Amaryllis, <laughs> they're, um, they're all named after flowers. Um, her sister is Delphinium and obviously her aunt is Hyacinth. So these academics come and they all start digging up these um, skeletons in there, a question is this the ghost, um, and strange things are happening, and then she gets threatened and all this, and there's also a love interest, um, Ben McCullough, he's the, um, he works on the neighbouring ranch, it's his family's land, um, and that for me really made the book, was the relationship between Amy and Ben, it was just hilarious. Um, their first interaction is just priceless and they have several more like that. They really grate on each other and they have one of those really explosive interactions that they seem to bicker all the time but really they're attracted to each other. And I thought that was a little refreshing but also the romance isn't the focus. Um, it seems to be secondary um, which is nice. It does concentrate more on the mystery of who is this ghost? Is, is the ghost actually real or is someone messing around? Um, and all, finding this, all this out is what really the book is about and the romance is kind of um, the secondary sort of plot and it's a really good romance. I, it, I felt like I was reading something new when I was reading their romance. It wasn't a straight off straight um, fall in love with each other. They're clearly attracted to each other but they pretend not to be and it's it's really great. And another plus for this book is her sister Finn is just really eccentric. She is a scientist and she loves her gadgets and she goes off on all these crazy things and the things she comes out with are just brilliant. She's amazingly clever and she, but she lacks common sense. She's one of those characters and I loved reading about her. Um, there's a love interest for her as well, one of the academic archaeologists that comes down and you could see that there was uh, like a, an attraction there and there was um, a little bit there they like danced 
at a party, but I wanted um, answers with them. I wanted to see them get together as well. Um, the romance as well is sort of um, gradual. It's not straight away. Um, nothing, even at the end, nothing is certain that they will be together or stay together. Um, so that's really good. Um, some bits I found a little draggy and dull. Um, and I would think, why are you describing that in great detail? We don't need to know about her taking this great long shower or describing where the goats are. Th those weren't as important. But the detail on the actual mystery was really good. Um, original plot. I liked reading about witches. Um, and she took a great take on it that they're only kitchen witches and psychics and things like that. They're not... Um, well, I guess they are supernatural, but not in a paranormal being type way. And so it was it was really good. I would definitely recommend this. Um, if you've checked out her first book, then I think you'll like this one. Or if you haven't checked out her book, I would start with this one because it was really good. I really enjoyed it. So it's a 4 out of 5. It didn't get 5 out of 5 or any higher because I wanted more um, of the romance between Finn and Mark. And the slow draggy parts um, at some point, but apart from that it was really good. I would definitely recommend it for fans of YA paranormal um, fiction and also if people are a bit fed up of focus on romance then this takes a little back step away from romance and it's all about the mystery. So definitely recommend it. If you've already checked it out please let me know what you thought of it and happy reading! <laughs>